You know, we had scheduled today Wolfgang Halbig. Now, he's an investigator who is a former state trooper, a former educator. He is a school security consultant. He started looking at Sandy Hook because that's his job. His job is to look at what happens when there's, when there's school violence and to advise people how to stop that. He's investigated Columbine. He's investigated many school shootings over and over again. And yet, when he tried to investigate Sandy Hook, what he found was very different. Not only was he totally stonewalled by the Connecticut police, but they actually threatened him. They had police in Florida come to his house twice at their request, and they called him and threatened him on the phone as well. And what he has found there is absolutely amazing. Now, this was, came to our attention when the American Free Press had an interview with him. We had a Don Salazar do an article about it. We've interviewed him for the nightly news, and we really wanted to have him on today, but he called just a few minutes ago and said he's got a personal family emergency. So pray for Wolfgang, whatever is going on with his family. We hope to have him on again and talk about this soon. It's amazing to see that this is all collapsing in front of the government's eyes. These phony narratives about Sandy Hook, these phony narratives about the Boston bombing. In the last hour, we played clips from both CNN and Rachel Maddow on MSNBC seriously questioning the events as they were reported, the official story about the Boston bombing. This is collapsing very quickly for them. And they see that the mainstream media no longer has any credibility. I, I kind of think uh, that this is the way this is going to happen is that uh, the Voice of America got the prohibition to broadcast. In a, uh, they were prohibited after they were created in, at the beginning of the Cold War. They were prohibited from broadcasting government propaganda into America. They broadcast American propaganda into Europe. They were prohibited from doing that here domestically. Now that prohibition has been lifted, I think what's going to happen is they're going to try to reposition much of the mainstream media as alternative media, questioning to some degree in a limited way what the government's narrative is. I think that's perhaps maybe what's behind MSNBC and Rachel Maddow, or maybe they're just seeing the, the collapse of Piers Morgan. But whatever, we welcome the fact that they're asking questions about the murder of Ibrahim Todeshev, who was, uh, they said they were picking him up for questioning, and then they shot him six times, once in the back of the head. That's clearly a murder, clearly an assassination at the hands of the FBI. And who investigates the FBI? Well, that would be the FBI itself, I guess. And Jakari, we just had uh, Chief Acevedo in here yesterday. We were questioning him about some of the things that have recently happened that the police have done here in Austin that we think are way over the top in terms of uh, this, this jogger incident that he had to apologize for last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, you did a, a special report where you went out on the street and you talked to people about that. Yes, because that, that was one of the big deals from the beginning was uh, to the people who aren't familiar with the story, uh, the Austin Police Department for the last couple of weeks have been track, uh, cracking down on various traffic infractions. And last week they were studying uh, jaywalking. So their intention was to go out and sign uh, citations to jaywalkers, but they encountered one young lady who did not want to stop for them, you know, so they claim. Uh, the reports are contradictory. We have eyewitnesses saying that the girl was grabbed from behind. Police Chief Alcevedo told me to my face that uh, the officer was in the young lady's field of view, but regardless of how she was grabbed. Yeah, when he was here, you were you were running past and saying, "Now show me how you grabbed yeah, it." We, like, we <laughs> you did, guys were reenacting we it down reenacting in the hallway, this, yeah. and I was like, "Come <laughs> on, tell me, tell me how this happened." So, right. regardless, you know, he says it doesn't matter if she was grabbed from behind or not because she knew it was an officer approaching her. So we did a man on the street. I went out to the streets and I asked young ladies. I said, "You know, how would you react?" If somebody ran up from you, ran up on you from behind, and I even ran up on some people <laughs> in the streets, and I just ran up behind, like, Hi, how do you feel about somebody coming up on you from behind? And of course, you know, the young <laughs> ladies who would stop and talk to him, they said, well, you know, I, I don't care who it is. If it's a police officer, if it's just some guy on the street, if somebody grabs me from behind or out of my field of view, I'm either going to jerk away or fight back. Yeah, I, I mean, I really have a problem with this whole notion that because they're wearing a uniform, they can do things that are really unacceptable. In other words, they, they have some authority because by nature of their uniform, but there needs to be some limits oh, on yes. the police. And we don't see those limits being enforced when they step over the line. I understand what Acevedo is saying. He says, you know, don't run from the police and you won't get shot in the back. Okay? That's pretty do much Do whatever it. they tell you to do and you can always take it to court. But and, the and problem he, is... And he told, I believe it was an interview with Alex he did a while back, he was talking about how you shouldn't run from the police for any reason. Yeah. 
you know, if regardless of how ridiculous the circumstances may be, how unjustified, he says, do not run from the police. And in the city of Austin, we know that you can be shot in the back if you do run from the police. That's right. And, and, they, and, and see, the problem is, is that they get away with it. Yes. And, and, and it's not just one isolated incident. You know, it, you can look at one case and you can say, all right, well, maybe... That's not as it appears to be, but when it happens over and over and over and over again in every jurisdiction, the American public is starting to come to the idea that there is nothing that a cop can do that they will ever stand trial for or ever be rolled back. So this whole idea that you do whatever the cop says, and then if you have a problem with it, you can take it to court, that ain't washing. I don't yeah, see that happening. Yeah, you see the situation with Kelly Thomas in California and last year yes. here in the city of Austin with uh, Larry Jackson, uh, the pe for the people who aren't familiar, Larry Jackson was a man, uh, he went to a bank after it was robbed. He was not the bank robber, but uh, he goes to the bank and allegedly tried to commit a fraud, whatever that means, whether it's a fake ID or pass a hot check. Regardless, he flees the bank because you know he doesn't want to be involved with the police. The officer commandeers a car to track him down. And after in a, a supposed struggle, uh, Larry Jackson is, is unfortunately shot in the back and dies. Yeah. Now, the officer wasn't under investigation until he retired, and then APD just dropped the investigation. So, which is to say, if you commit a crime or you kill somebody, mm -hmm. if you just retire, you don't want to fight it, you say, hey, I'm done with it, then investigation is dropped. That's just amazing. And, and to point it out, too, I mean, the, the guy who ran was a black guy. The, mur the, uh, bank, the bank robbery suspect was a, was a white guy. I mean, he yes. didn't match the description. It's just kind of like this uh, this Chris Dorner case out in, in L.A., you know, where they're looking for a black man and a different, and they shoot up a car with two white women, totally different cars, a car, not a different truck, color, a different yeah, color, the whole bit. Stuff. I mean, it's just amazing, and yet they get away with it. Why? Because we've got a legal system that is fundamentally broken. That's why I don't support the death penalty. I support the death penalty in principle, mm -hmm. but I don't support it in practice because I don't believe that people are getting a fair and honest trial. I don't believe that the juries, most importantly, the juries do not see themselves as independent of the judge's instructions as somebody who's going to sit there and and look at the facts and, and see that their job is justice to judge the law as well as the facts of the case. And you have so, in the case of some of these police uh, cases where they're not, they're not found guilty, mm -hmm. The judges can manipulate that system by withholding evidence. I mean, yes. they, they have so much leeway, and we don't have an independent jury system. It's a, it's a broken system. But let's take a look at your report here. Can we go to that report, guys? We don't have that ready just yet. Okay, we're, we're, here, at the, we're here at the spot where last week four Austin police officers were needed to subdue a single female jogger. The original offense jaywalking. She was later on arrested for the failure to identify to an officer. What happened to the Miranda right to remain silent? What happened to the Fifth Amendment? What happened to the First Amendment? The freedom of speech. Doesn't that also include the freedom not to speak? Let's find out what these students have to say. Hi, right, excuse me. Hi. Right. Uh, what do you think about the jogger who got arrested out here last week? I actually think it's kind of funny because I cross the street all the time. What do you think about the jaywalker who was arrested last week? I don't know the whole story. Do you? I don't know the whole story, but with what you heard, do you have any opinion? Because they say, well, she was officially arrested for failing to identify to an officer. It wasn't the jaywalking charge. But just the, the police resources, do you think it's a good use of a police resource to be out here busting uh, jaywalkers, just cracking down on jaywalking? I don't know. That's sort of like, you know, do you still beat your wife, right? You, you can't really beat your wife. You can't say whether you did or not because you'd be guilty either way. I don't necessarily agree with his... Uh, comparison to beating your wife, uh, I mean, busting a jaywalker is busting a jaywalker. My thoughts are that's pretty ridiculous, but um, it was a white girl in a nice part of town, and if it was anybody else, it wouldn't have made the news. If somebody gets hit from jaywalking, then that's their problem. You don't need four cops involved. Um, I think he shouldn't have got arrested, or she shouldn't have got arrested. Why is that? Because she was just crossing the street. Right. Well, you know, the official reason given for her arrest wasn't so much that she crossed the street. It was because she failed to identify to an officer. So that means she didn't show her ID? Is that the... Well, she didn't provide the Austin Police Department with as much information as they desired. I mean, are you familiar with your Miranda rights? Yes, I am familiar. With can, you, can you tell me uh, one of the Miranda rights? Uh, you have a, a right to remain silent. There have been contradictory reports. Uh, the police are saying that they were in the young lady's field of view when they tried to grab her. There have been other reports saying that the officers approached her from behind. 
Quintero doesn't think the officer did run up beside her, like Acevedo said. I think he grabbed her slightly from behind, and it's, it may not be from far behind, but enough to where she didn't notice who was grabbing her right away. So if you were out jogging, you got your headphones in, you're a single woman alone, and somebody just grabbed you from behind, what would your reaction be? I would have kept running. Um, all I heard, I read, was that she didn't see them coming and they grabbed her from behind. Whether or not he grabbed her by behind, it doesn't matter. It's not relevant. At some point, she knows it's a cop. If somebody was to grab you from behind for any reason, what would your reaction be? Um, definitely do exactly what she did, you know, kick right. their ass. <laughs> uh, excuse me, miss, you were jaywalking there for a second? Yeah, class, I'm sorry. Okay, so she has to go to class, and that's a good reason to jaywalk. Uh, I just want you to know you can get arrested by the Austin Police Department. And let me ask you about some comments that the police chief made. Yeah. He said that, you know, the big controversy of last week was that a jogger was arrested, you know, for failing to identify. He says, in comparison, in other cities, you have officers who are actually sexually assaulting people. So does that concern you at all, that the bar has been set kind of low? He, he, he later came back and, you know, took back those comments. But do you think that's a good place to set the bar? No, you sh <laughs> this has nothing to do with sexual assault. You can't compare that. Now, he has later come back and rescinded those comments. But do you think that's kind of a bad place that's to set That's a great report. Bar right, we're, start we're out of time on this segment. We're going to be right back. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding, making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. The brainwashing media machine has been turned up on high, and it's time for humanity to double down on the true people's media and strike back against the tyrants that are destroying our civilization with their lies and fraud. We are the resistance. You are the resistance. You are the info war. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. There's a lot of breaking news today. You know, we see that uh, yet another sailor has come forward talking about how his exposure at Fukushima has ruined his health. It's now up to 100 solar soldiers or, and sailors here or there. They uh, said that they didn't know. This is what CBS said. They didn't know that they were heading into the path of a radiation plume. Really? I don't know. I think somebody knew about that. They said now three years after the exposure, at least 100 of those first responders are suffering from unexplained illnesses like cancer, leukemia, bleeding, and hair loss. We had one of those sailors on the program. Alex talked to him at length. A very sad situation, but we've seen over and over again a total disregard, whether it's depleted uranium, whether it's Agent Orange. The government doesn't treat soldiers with the respect that they should have for them. In many cases, they treat them worse than they do chimpanzees because they've even said in some cases that they're cheaper than pen chim chimpanzees. Uh, also, Google fears that the FCC's new internet powers are going to affect even Google. And we've just seen just the last week how the FCC was going to intrude itself into newsrooms. Everybody was concerned about that. They said content is none of your business, but the FCC is making it their business. And now the fears are that they're going to do a backdoor content management on the internet using the same kind of justification that they were trying to get with SOPA. We've had SOPA, we've had PIPA, we've had CISPA rejected twice. Now it looks like they're going to try to just do it with the FCC. You know, that's kind of, Jakari, that's kind of like uh, Obama has done this in the past, hasn't he? You know, he's, mm -hmm. he's always come in and uh, just said, well, this is the year of action. We're just going to go around Congress. If we can't get uh, internet censorship, internet control passed by Congress, well, just, I'm sure we can just, just do the FCC. Stuff, gun stuff, war, Oh, yeah, war. whatever. And I, if that's I right. can get Congress to sign on, I'm just going to, I got my pen, I got my telephone, that's how I'm going to do it. That's right. We've also got uh, the FBI says that they had human source contact with bin Laden as far back as 1993. This is an exclusive from the Washington Times. 
But, you know, this is not a surprise. This is something that Sibel Edmonds blew the whistle on. She tried to get the 9-11 Commission to pay attention to this, and, of course, they gagged her. Uh, that's how she got the title of uh, the most censored woman in history, a whistleblower who was at the FBI, and she knew that they were in contact with bin Laden leading up to 9-11. We've said over and over again that bin Laden was deeply tied, deeply tied to the CIA. He was their guy, just as they turn against Manuel Noriega and others. And then also we've got some planned food safety rules now coming from the FDA again. Not from the legislature, not being passed as laws, but regulations. These regulations would essentially ban organic farming. They would ban practices that have been performed by farmers for millennia yeah. using natural organic fertilizer, using animals to plow a field. No, you can't do that. You got to buy your fertilizer from the pharmaceutical companies and exactly. big agra. Uh, Jakar, you've got some updates on some articles some various of, some various yeah. uh stories about self-defense you know all about the second amendment and self-defense but i want to talk briefly about that uh the fda article where they said they don't want to have organic farming and so forth we've seen the the raids on the raw milk facilities mm -hmm. and on people who have their own uh farms and so forth and this is a very important issue because you know we do have some victories like with subway saying that they want to take or they're going to take the, uh, what do you call it, the yoga mat material out yeah. of, the f of the breads and things like that. That happened very quickly. Yes, yeah, so that's a yeah. good victory, but we also need to get behind these these organic farmers because this is the food that you need to be eating. And if these guys get shut down, all it's going to be is GMO. So it's a very important issue. That's right. And just earlier this week, I talked to Mark Baker, Baker's Green Acres. He's a farmer in Michigan. And the pig association there is basically coming after the farmers who are raising heritage pigs. They're saying that they're feral. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Because We've just seen this case where you've got a Connecticut teenager who goes to Massachusetts to get treatment, and you've got one hospital that says it's a physical condition, another one says it's a psychiatric condition, and the parents don't have any say-so in this. They believe, they, they agree with the, with the uh, diagnosis that it's a physical condition, and they see their daughter getting constantly worse, wasting away. But the court, the Massachusetts court, se steps in and says, can't do anything about it. We're not going to let you, do, we're not even going to let you talk to the media about it. And they put a contempt order on the father when he goes and talks to Glenn Beck about it. I mean, it's just outrageous. It and outrageous now they put their daughter in foster care. Exactly, because you see even stories where they try to take your children away or put some kind of a sanction on you if you refuse to vaccinate your children. Yes. You say, I don't, I've, yes. I've read before I vaccinated and I've choose to not vaccinate my child and now they want to take your children away. Yes, that's right. Coming against the family, and as we just talked about in the last segment, coming against the family farm, we've had... First, we had Obama's Labor Department say about a year ago, wasn't it? They said uh, that they were going to start taking a close look at child labor laws and how oh, they applied yeah. on the farm, yeah, right? You could, You're not going to be work on the farm. Yeah. And, you know, I have a, a family of uh, farmers, you know, some old time Oklahoma country folks. And, you know, they were, you know, Obama supporters. And I said, you know, Obama doesn't want kids to work on the farm. They just couldn't <laughs> believe it. It's like, why would he do that? I said, because he can. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's absolutely insane. I, I just talked earlier this week. Uh, is an interview on the nightly news, and of course, Jakari is uh, on the night is a host and a reporter on the nightly news. It's something you guys need to support. Prison Planet TV. I'll put a little plug in there for <laughs> we're listener supported. It's a subscription service. Just one uh, subscription will let you share that with ten people simultaneously. So it's a it's a great way to see our documentaries, to see our news reports first. Mm -hmm. But I had. Mark Baker, Baker's Green Acres. He's a, a farmer in Michigan, and he's raising heritage. Pigs. He's he's letting it's like free range cattle. Uh, it's like uh, uh, you know grass fed cattle, free range chicken. That's what he's doing with his pigs, and he's got a strain of heritage pigs that, since he lives in Michigan, they've got hair on them. And based on the physical appearance of the pigs, right. based on whether they've got uh, the ears that stick up, where they got uh, fur, whatever. Of course, this all came from his competitors who are politically connected. And for three years, nearly, he's been fighting this order that came out of the state of Michigan. They want to kill all of his pigs. Because and they don't look like the cute pigs in the movies. That's right. And one of the things that he told me, the reason I started getting on this again, was he said that he got into farming because when he was in the military, the most grounded, most centered people that he met had been raised on a farm. And he wanted that life for his family. 
and he wanted to, you know, so that's why he got into farming. You've got family farmers who are not producing the kind of factory food that we're concerned about, mm -hmm. that, that's got a lot of pesticides, a lot of steroids, a lot of uh, antibiotics in it. You've got good, clean, honest food, and the government is coming down on them from every direction like a hammer. I mean, it was the child labor laws and the EPA from the Labor Department. It's the EPA came after them with dust regulations. Now we've got the FDA coming out and saying they can't have natural fertilizer. And then I mean, even every uh, during uh, some drought periods, we have seen cows and other livestock eating candy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's all kinds Crazy of stuff. wacky things. But, you know, we're going to, th they want to have the entire food supply controlled by just a few people who are their friends, both for monetary purposes, but it's also a very po effective political means. You are watching the best of the Alex Jones Show, weekdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Watch live at InfoWars.com forward slash show or become a member of InfoWarsNews.com and help us take resistance to the next level.